Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod for the Abishu Miramar that adds the Z Coop version to the game. And as you can see, there are quite a few Z Coop options available to us, but we're going to start simple and go with the Z Coop Base Miramatic, which is based on the Base Miramatic directly above it. And for comparison purposes, it'll be convenient to have both of these up, so let's go and spawn up the regular Base Miramatic. Now, some of these changes are very obvious, some of them are less obvious. Before we go into that, let me just line this thing up in a nice and convenient location for comparison purposes. There we go. Now the most obvious difference is that this is a coupe so it only has two doors and the normal version is a sedan with four doors. But there's a less obvious difference and the best way to show this off is to put the camera into chase mode and then lock it to the side and then do the same for this one. We're gonna go to chase mode, lock it to the side and then we go between these two vehicles. It's really easy to compare the dimensions between them. Now if you stare at the rear of the vehicle, like right where the bumper is, you'll notice the bumper extends out a little bit more on the sedan version compared to the coupe version, but the wheelbase between the two vehicles is identical. You can test this by staring at the wheels and then going between the two vehicles like so. If the position of the wheels does not appear to change, you can assume that the wheelbase is identical and going between these two, I don't notice a difference at all. In addition to this, the coupe version has a much more sloped C pillar. So the C pillar is this pillar right here. And on the regular Miramar, it's pretty straight down, but then you get the coupe version it's way sloped and much sportier looking and I think the trunk is also a little bit more sloped to kind of blend that in and then you have a small difference on that rear fender where it has a sporty angle thing I don't know what to call it because it's not really a fender but it's just like this sporty angle where this one just doesn't have that so it's just a small change that gives it a little bit more sport look now you'll notice if you look closely at this thing it says Z on the C pillar well what does the Z mean the Z means it's a slightly updated version of the normal Miramar which has a different taillights. And again, to show that off, we're gonna just go to this car and put it to the same camera position. So you see the taillights here, and then you see the taillights there. Very, very different. And then if we go to the front, you'll see it also has a different headlights. And we're gonna do the same thing here. So there is the regular headlights. And then here are the newer headlights. And you'll notice the whole design of the front's actually different. Like the blinkers are in a different location. The grill is a different shape. And then of course, the lights are slightly different. So anyways, let's go ahead and drive this around a little bit. For the most part, it drives very similar to a normal Ibishu Miramar, but it does feel a little bit faster because it shaves off about 200 pounds compared to the four-door version, thanks to it only being a two-door vehicle and being slightly shorter than the sedan. So that means that zero to 60 is actually about two seconds faster than the normal version of the vehicle, which means we could crash into this tree two seconds sooner if we just got up to 60 miles per hour. I don't know how fast we're actually going. But anyways, here's a quick look at the damage, a little bit shrouded by the bush, unfortunately. So let's get a new Miramar, and then we're going to go in the opposite direction, but I got to be careful not to crash into the Miramar that's right here. Because it was kind of in my blind spot as I was doing that 180, and I could have easily just went right into it, which would be super embarrassing. So for this next crash test, I want to try to roll this thing over and get some roof damage. There are a few places I could do this, but I want to make sure I'm going fast enough to fully roll it over. Like 40 miles per hour, probably could roll it, but not for sure all the time, it feels like. Like once I'm up to 50, that feels like a good speed. So like right here, 50 miles per hour, just get it onto the roof. Perfect, this should get some roof damage from that. And then will it land upright somehow? Nope, we're gonna have to do a quick adjustment to it. We'll turn the engine off so it doesn't starve itself of oil. Never mind, it's starved of oil anyways. I thought I turned it off fast enough where that wouldn't happen. There we go. So we can look at the damage to this thing and it's uh, a little crinkly right there on that C pillar, but overall it seems pretty reasonable. So let's see, this thing should have no problems driving some more, right? Good, looks like it might be pulling a little bit to the side. I can't quite tell on the dirt road because it's so bumpy. Seems like it's actually driving straight still, so that's good. So let's go ahead and try to roll it again and get some more roof damage. I think if we hug this corner, yep, we can roll it over just like that. And again, not going to land upright, so we'll kill the engine and then just go ahead and flip it over manually and keep on driving once we get this thing started back up. So looking at the damage right here, still a little crinkly in that corner, but the rest of it appears to be doing very well in deformation. So let's see if we can do another flip just like that one. Let's go ahead and pull on the inside right here and see, will it roll? Uh, not quite, but we're going to bounce all over the place and uh, hey, there's the roll after all. And I think that'll do it for this vehicle. Here's just a quick look at the side before we reset it. Now I'll do one more drive going straight ahead and then we're going to swap maps because it feels like there's only so much you can do on this map before you're doing the same thing over and over again because there aren't that many alternative paths here. Like this is already pretty much the same as the first crash we did, but... You can always make it different by crashing somewhere else, or even if you do the same crash, you can get a pretty different result if you do it over and over again with small variances. But we're going to do something completely different. We're going to go up this rock wall and uh, see what happens to the car right there. Okay, so my door just got torn off, and my vehicle got all bent out of shape. Still could put the power down somehow. I'm not exactly sure 
how it's managing that. Traction is severely lacking because this thing has open differential. Both of the wheels need to be on the ground, otherwise it'll just spin the wheel that's up in the air. And uh, with that really big imbalance on the rear axle, we're going to be spinning that wheel a lot and barely moving. But hey, we got it up to 40 miles per hour again, so let's just slam into that rock. There you go, drive shaft broken, which uh, I'm kind of surprised didn't happen the first time because of how bent out it is, and I'm not surprised it happened there. So here's a real quick look at the front of the vehicle, and then we'll also try to take a look at the side of the vehicle. We gotta go underground to do that, but once you're underground, you can see it pretty clearly. And now we're gonna do the as promised map change, and I'm thinking let's just go to East Coast USA because I want a map like East Coast USA. Before we do any driving here, let's go through some of these Z Coupe variants. So as I already mentioned, we have the base versions, then we have the Lux versions, which is very similar to how we have the base and then the Z Coupe base. The changes are the same between the sets, so I'm not gonna spawn that up. And same goes for the GTZ, it's the same changes between the set of vehicles. But when you get to the custom, that's where things get a little bit different. The Miramar Z Coupe Custom is very different from the Miramar Custom. So let's go ahead and spawn up the Z Coupe Custom so you can see what that one looks like. In addition to the Z Coupe changes I mentioned earlier, this one also has removed rear and front bumpers. It has an externally mounted oil cooler. And then it has a different suspension setup with a welded differential, which is great if you want to do things like sliding around or donuts. Like, this thing doesn't have that much power, but it does some great donuts with the little amount of power it has. Just sitting right here, sliding, 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 getting a little bit of smoke up into the air. But if you don't want to do donuts, you know, you don't have to. You could also just, you know, slide around corners like that and try not to spin out as I am doing right here. Perfect. I mean, I'm trying not to spin out, not spinning out. I'm not spinning out yet. It's only been like 30 seconds. Oh, goodness, I'm spinning out. I'm not spinning out. I almost spun out. Let's just crash this before I do spin out. Smart strategy. If you know you're going to spin out, just take the wreck and admire the fire. Now let's try to drive this car for more than 10 feet before we crash because that is possible. It's just not the easiest thing to do because of the way this car drives. The back end likes to kick out. And when the back end kicks out, it's not the easiest car to recover. You have to have a lot of respect for the vehicle to recover it. And you might think you recover and then you didn't. So then you start swerving all over the place like I did last time. So like right here, you see I'm sliding just a little bit. You gotta let the car stabilize out, then start to do things again. So slides, make sure you're stable, then go. Because if you do it where you're kind of like, oh, I'm okay, you, you do that kind of thing. Where you go back and forth, back and forth, but no, before you know it, you're into a rock just like I was last time. So, but you can recover it even if you start to go back and forth because I just did it right there. I'm doing it right here too. Whew. There goes my rear light. I didn't need that. So I think I'm going a little too fast for my own good, but I'm right on the edge of things. and. The nice thing about this car is when you're driving it and staying on the road, it really feels rewarding and great. Like, I feel awesome whenever I go around a corner with this thing cleanly. Because of the way it drives, it's just, you know you did a pretty good corner not to crash and die when it starts to slide out and you recover it properly at a good speed. So I kind of go through here, starting to slide just a bit, but I kept it straight. Same through here. Actually, I see a good place to jump, so let's go. Oh, uh, that tree grabbed me. Hey, look, a different road. Except, uh... Can I get any traction here? No, we can't. So let's just reset it. I feel like that's good enough proof that I can drive this thing. So now let's drive it poorly. So what are we going to do when we see a corner? We're going to flip it up and land it upright. Yes. All right. Keep on driving. I think we lost one, two mirrors. Actually, it looks kind of good without the mirrors. Like it's a complete safety hazard, but that's such a clean body line when you don't have the mirrors. All right. So let's see. Can we flip it again if we just kind of cruise into the dirt right here? I think we should be able to. So we'll go whoop. There we go, there's another flip. And radiator damage, that's it. Can we get it upright? Nope, but I can make it go upright. And I'm looking at the tires. They are not doing well here. I know no wheel axles are broken yet, but I don't know how much steering I actually have left in this thing. Has good power put down still. We got out of that corner nice and easy. I think the weld differential helps a lot with the power put down as we're sliding all over the place like this. And I'm just looking for another place to try to flip it. I see a little rock right here. Yep. Can we get it upright again? Not without cheating a little bit. So you just flip it there and try to back out of here. Still able to put some power down. Definitely feels worse than before. Oh, I like how if you look in there, you can see the, <laughs> like you can peek in there and see the engine right there. It looks so cool because you can see the red just peeking through. Oh, uh -oh we don't have any traction after all. We only have it if we're backing up. So obvious solution is to back up very 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 slowly and now we're overheating the engine so oh, this is a little bit too slow don't you think are we even moving still no maybe i don't care because we're going to be getting a new car we're going to go with the abishu miramar z coupe gtz 1600 which is based on the z coupe gtz which is based on the gtz which i'm assuming is based on a normal miramar 
So you get the GTZ, you give it the Z Coopification, it becomes the Z Coop GTZ. And then a few modifications later, it becomes the rare limited edition Z GTZ 1600 version with a 1.6 dual overhead cam and a special paint job. So it has a 1.6 liter engine and you might be thinking, well, what's the normal GTZ have? It has a 1.9 liter engine. So your first thought is, oh, it has a smaller engine, it's gonna be slower. Ah, that's where you're wrong because this one has a dual overhead cam engine. The other one only has a single overhead cam engine, I believe. So it's a more efficient engine, so it actually makes more power even though it has a smaller literage. Literage is a word, right? I think it is. Anyways, the difference between the two engines in terms of weight isn't that significant. It's only about 30 pounds because it's 0.3 liters, which is not a lot. A third of a liter, roughly, is a very small amount. And then it adds dual overhead cam instead of the single one, which just adds a little bit more weight. So it makes sense that the weight difference wouldn't be that big. I don't notice the weight difference, but I do notice the extra power. This thing accelerates harder than the other one. And I went through that dirt road just so we could get a different environment because I've already driven the other roads, so here's a new road to drive on. We can get this thing up to a pretty good speed. Ooh, a ditch! With the magnificent roll! Alright, I like that. Oh, I don't like that last hit. I liked watching it roll and not get any damage. That hit, let's see, it looks like we're popped in the- Ooh, that's interesting. We actually got popped in between the bush and the tree or something. So we're in the air a little bit, but I think if we get out of there, we should be able to keep on driving. Can we get out of here on our own, or are we still kind of stuck between two things? Alright, we're still stuck, so... Grab it by the corner and just yank! Alright, front bumper was a little stuck in the tree, that's what happened. Also, there's the paint job. And that is not a carbon fiber hood. If you look at the parts list, it's the normal hood, but it's painted black, so you might think it's carbon fiber. I mean, think of the age of this car. It would be completely aftermarket if you ever found a carbon fiber part on this vehicle because it's from the 1960s they didn't use a carbon fiber in a car like this in the 1960s all right so this thing's not driving good so let's just pop into the tree drive shaft broken pretty uh nice looking crash right there the way the hood just launched up like that i like that so um let's keep this position just pull it back to about uh, here and then we're going to do a quick 180 and continue along the way we were going earlier just a quick look at the stripe though because there are two things i really like about it i like how it has the 1600 there I like how it goes around the Miramar GTZ logo, which is normally already there, but it really incorporates it into the stripe to make it look nice. So, continuing along, we're already up to 60 miles per hour, which is a pretty good feat for a car this old. And going up this hill, it's actually still pulling. That is very impressive. I don't think the normal GTZ would still pull through there. I think it would just about maintain speed. All right, so let's go ahead and find a good place to crash this. Hmm, nothing quite yet. I was thinking about sliding into a tree, but I decided to hold it safe. I mean, the GTZ actually drives really good. Up, we're on two wheels. We're going to crash it. The uh, up on two wheels was unplanned, but it weren't okay. That was a decent enough crash. Let's see. Can we uh, try to flip this thing over before it ends up dying? There we go. Can we do any driving still? Uh, no, that front left wheel, well, well, let's see, if we're going forward, does it kind of fix itself? Nah, not really, we are not driving at all, so get a fresh one, keep on driving. Make sure we don't crash into any trees yet, gotta get up to speed before you do the crashes. If I'm not lost, I think the town is near by ish I don't know, I've never actually driven this road from this direction, so I don't know exactly what it looks like. Like, I know a lot of roads in this game, this one... I think I know? Let me see, let me see if I'm right here. If we go straight through here, yes, this is the town. Okay, I was correct. My memory was not wrong, it did not fail me. And now we're gonna just wrap around a post. That was a nice crash. It's funny, it wrapped around the trash can more than the post it looks like. Anyways, let's go ahead and change maps for the last version of this car, which is actually the coolest version by far. And it's a race car, so I think we should go to a racetrack. And you might have already seen it, but we're going to be taking a look at the Ibishu Miramar Z240 race car, which is not just the race version Z Coopified. This one has a bunch of custom parts, and it says the legendary number 47 race car with a beastly look and a screaming high RPM engine. And before we do any driving with this, I want to take a look at these custom parts. So this whole rear section is custom. And by whole rear section, I think the best way to show it off is just go here and that is all one custom piece and it actually adds a lot of width to the vehicle because if you look that's like the normal width of the vehicle right here and then that whole extended section that's all additions from that piece and then you have a similar amount of addition on the front it's not like a whole giant chunk of piece it's just a fender 
but it gives you big fat wheels in the front and rear. And then on the front, we also have a custom bumper, which has these air intakes right there. At least it looks like an air intake or something. I don't know exactly where it goes. We can try to go inside of it. It just goes to the wheels. Oh, maybe it cools the brakes. That would actually make sense. It goes right to the wheels, so it probably helps cool the brakes. And then on the back, we also have a custom wing. It says Ibishu on it. I really like that. And I like the way that wing looks on this car. That is a nice looking wing. It's not just like a strapped on wing. That one looks like it's made for the vehicle. So let's go ahead and drive this some. You notice the tachometer says up to 11,000 RPMs. Unfortunately, it doesn't sound like an 11,000 RPM engine. It sounds like every other vehicle in BMG drive. It sounds identical to the stock pickup truck, basically. The good news is I really like the way it drives. It actually drives better than the regular race version to me. And I think that's because it has a little bit wider tires on it and it's 150 pounds less than the normal race version. And the engine, is more power versus torque like the regular race version doesn't have like a super torquey engine or anything like that but this one is just a little bit more power focused and then of course 11,000 rpms is a neat little feature although the automatic transmission is not the greatest of times at using that power band because like the peak power is at like 9,000 rpms and sometimes you're staring at the tachometer as it's sitting at 5,000 rpms so let's go ahead and try to get some rear damage to this thing so you can see the rear bodywork get deformed up that looks pretty good. We lost the wing. And we can look at that damage right there. It seems pretty good. So we'll just go ahead and keep on driving. How straight is it? It's pulling a little bit. I think we can manage. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can manage. I can manage. I just got scared for a second because I thought I couldn't manage. I didn't believe in myself. All right, this thing is not driving good. I'm gonna have to dump it in the dirt a little bit to make it through this corner because if I try to steer in a left enough to make it through the corner, it's gonna slide because it's so unbalanced. It's a weird situation to be in. Like, I just kind of guessed that that would work super fast, and what am I doing? Sliding all over the place. Bouncing rear. All right, let's just try to ride this thing up on the wall, because that's fun to do. Come on. Yep, yep, nope. Come on, get up on that wall. Yeah, there we go. That's how you ride the wall for 0.2 seconds. And now we're upside down. I'll take one more look at the damage right here. So, again, it looks pretty good on the rear, and I don't think there's anything on the front. So, let's go ahead and just respawn this. And for this drive, let's use a manual transmission here so we could actually keep the vehicle more in the power. Because when we shift at redline, I think it puts it at about 8,000 RPMs. Yeah, almost 9,000 actually, which is where peak power is. So it feels a lot faster when you use the manual transmission compared to the automatic because when you use the manual, you can rev it all the way up to 11,000 before you shift. And if you see yourself sitting at 6,000, that's a downshift. And I'm staring at the tachometer and not the road, so I just plowed right off the road. That was great. I wanted to make sure though that I proved when you're at 6,000 and you downshift, it's a good plan. But the automatic transmission, it doesn't know that that's a good plan. It's used to cars with, you know, oh my goodness, 6,000 RPM, that's near red line. You know, not this 11,000 RPM nonsense. And that's more than my car, and I have a car that revs forever. You know, I'm like, oh, my RXA revs forever. This thing got more revs than me. It's a race car, to be fair, you know. But still, that's impressive amount of revs. And then you got, you know, old Formula One cars. Those things revved up to like 15,000. I think newer ones are even more nowadays because of all the restrictions on the engine size. It's like, fine, we'll make the engines rev to a billion. And that's how Formula One cars are so fast and still sound okay. Like, they don't sound as good as they used to, that's for sure, but they sound all right. Oh, come on, come on. Stay straight. There we go. Got a little bit uh, bouncy right there. I think that's on the driver hopping the curb, though, than the car. And now we're going to go in the pits. We did a good lap. We're done here. Time to cruise in and relax. Which one is my stall? There's my stall. I'm the last stall. These actually are kind of thin. Like, you can't just dive into this at like 50 miles an hour because it's a wall immediately and the doors aren't wide. Actually, are some doors wider than others? I don't know. We'll test that some other day. Uh, anyways, I think that's about... All the driving we're gonna do here I want to go ahead and wreck this car up a little bit though and I don't feel like wrecking it up on a racetrack so I'm just gonna pop to a different map to wreck it up some this is kind of a racetrack it's a perfect place to wreck it up that sounds weird right what I'm trying to say is on a normal racetrack you crash into barriers and walls and that's about it on this one it's like an illegitimate racetrack you got trees everywhere that you could slam into and slamming into the trees you'll get me a little bit cooler crashes than slamming into walls most of the time Ooh, just uh bottomed out right there is this car okay that's fine, we're just gonna crash into a tree anyways right now. So boom, right into that rear corner. Really gotta test that area, and I think we can still drive, but we're stuck inside of a bush, unfortunately, it looks like. Let me just uh, yank this thing out of the bush. Wow, it's really stuck on that bush. 
What's up with that bush, man? It's too strong. All right, so I tore off a door in the process, but we should still be able to drive. Wait, I lost both doors in the process, actually. Don't know which one I tore off. I wasn't paying that close of attention. Oh, I love the way the trunk pops open as I'm braking. Like we're accelerating down low. Active arrow, activate. Braking, active arrow, slow us down. I wonder if it actually helps at all if the way the game is designed or not. I don't know if the game actually says, oh, hey, this piece of the arrow is going up. It's going to reduce. It's not even arrow. It's the trunk. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, let's find the next tree to crash into. There's one that's right there sitting pretty and boom. Nice spin on it. Wheel axle broken. Can we keep on going with my one wheel? Um, yes, ish. Like, I don't know how fast we're going to go, but my trike can actually keep accelerating. It's going. It's going to get revenge on the wheel for falling off. It's chasing after it. And there's the door. It's actually doing a surprisingly good job for a three-wheeled vehicle. Like, cornering, yeah, it's terrible, but it could put down the power decent. He's got to line it up with the corner, like, or, like, with the straightaway like this, and then we can put the power down. Since we can't corner, I'm just going to go right into a tree. So, like this. Boom. And drive shaft broken. That was a pretty good run. I think we could do a little bit better, though, by being a little bit more chaotic. This time, we're just going to dive straight through the dirt. I don't even care if there are corners and stuff. We're going to drive straight through it. And we're going to hop this thing into the air. It's crashing all over the ground. Don't care. Hopping into the air onto some buildings. Now that's a dramatic ending. So I'm going to go in the video here. Let's see. Can we get a good look at the damage? Not really. There are a lot of trees around here. But look cool as it happened. So until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.